Hi, this is James Joe from host of Web Comics Reviews and Interviews. Tonight, it's the sex talk. So sit back, relax, and let the Geek Fest begin. First off, the obligatory warning. There are certain people who would prefer not to have certain mature subject matter discussed, especially not even mentioned. If this happens to be you, this is your chance to run. Everybody else, you know what you signed up for. Yes, tonight we're talking about something that birds do, that bees do, that even triple-armed aliens from regular six do. We're not talking about politics and religion. Those are relatively easy topics. You can disguise those and have some fun disguising them as much as you want. Just look at, say, Snoopy, and if you really want fun, look at Pogo. Two great comics that were able to talk about religion and politics all day long and nobody was the wiser. And then, of course, you have Doonesbury. But that's another issue entirely. The key here is we're talking about good old-fashioned sex. Two people. Okay, sometimes not just two people. Sometimes more, sometimes actually less. Doing weird things in the bedroom. Or other locations. You know. The problem here is that there are certain subject matters that you cannot bring up without affecting how your car- how your comic is going to get marketed. That is, there are certain ratings attached to sex depending on how you try to pull it off. Just like there are violence, just like there is language. And while this may be seen as a little... Well, a little puritanical to some, there actually are some pretty good reasons. I'm sure by the time we're done tonight, you'll figure out what those reasons are. If not, you know, I'll probably end up being rather explicit about it, so to speak. The problem is, is that from a marketing perspective, you've got twofold situation. The first is that, well, there are certain sites that would prefer not to deal with certain types of mature subject matter. Sex, obviously, is one of them, and there are certain types of sex that others would try to avoid altogether. Obviously, if you're interested in having some sort of sex scene, especially the sex scenes in question, these may not be the world's greatest sites for you. By the same token, if you try to do a dead tree version, that is, you actually try to get your comic into a comic book shop, or even a bookstore, you may be having a problem because, well, they'll be trying to put you, you know, if you have, if you get way too much interesting with your sexual scenes, yeah, they may try to put you in that curtained area in the back that nobody really wants to talk about. So obviously, if you have way too much sex or if you're just having a little too much fun with it, it may make things harder to market your comic later on and therefore limit the profitability. If that's not a problem for you or if that's actually what you're going for, go for it. Everybody else, this is going to be a bumpy flight. Um, when it comes down to sex and your comic book, it's going to come down to three areas. The first two we're definitely going to be talking about, which are going to be the writing and what the other is going to be drawing. Yeah, we're going to discuss drawing on a non-visual medium. This is going to be all sorts of fun. As far as the third, which is marketing, I can't really help you with because there's always going to be way too many variables. Um, the best I can suggest is you be upfront with whoever you're working with or whoever you're trying to sell to and be straight up and say, hey, it has sex. Here's the level at which it's being represented in the comic and let it go up there. You know, if you have, if you just have to mention sex or if you happen to go full on graphic or have rape. That's something you're going to have to discuss. I mean, if you don't bring that stuff up, you're going to have a very ticked person out. And once you tick a person off in the marketing field, things get really interesting, especially in an era where, you know, people don't just simply discuss things locally. Yeah, social media has changed a whole lot. It's made it a lot easier to market your comic, but you also have a lot more landmines to deal with. And unfortunately, sex is most definitely one of those landmines. 
So, if you're trying to market your comic and it has a lot of sex in it, or even a little, yeah, you're going to want to make sure that whoever you're dealing with knows about it ahead of time. It's just, unfortunately, something you have to do in order to get it into the best possible location. So, and straight up, if you want to have a Caligula level sex orgy and you're trying to get into the kids section, yeah, it's really not going to work that way. You've got some serious issues that you need to work on. All I'm going to say as far as that goes. Okay? But, for the rest of us normal people, be advised that sex, as long as nudity, swearing, a few other things, will tend to get your character, will tend to get your comic into different locations. Some of them good, some of them bad. So keep that in mind. While we are going to be bringing up how to draw sex throughout this to at least some degree, let's get the, the big gist part of it right out, out of the way right off the bat. When you're going to do a sex scene in your comic, it's something you're going to need to discuss with your artist. If you happen to be the artist as well as the writer, this should be an obviously simple solution. But you are going to have to have some sort of talk with an artist at some point. Even if it's an interior, sorry, it's an inner dialogue of some sort. The reason is, is that there's a thousand and one ways to draw a sex scene, and this is stuff that needs to be discussed as quickly as possible. That is, how explicit you're going to be, how much fun you're going to have with it, and so on and so forth. Um, there are certain types of sex scenes that will eliminate a lot of the drawing. The fade out, for example, is probably the king in that particular area. But you're going to have to have some sort of discussion when it comes to how the scene is going to be drawn. Plus, what kind of limits are going to be in there as well. You can have a situation where instead of looking at the actual physicality of the two characters, you go into some sort of mental realm where everything goes into metaphors and all that. That can work, especially with the right comic. But if you are going to do some sort of sex scene where there's actually two people in bed or some other location and there's something actually going on, that's going to have to be discussed because certain artists have certain limitations. Um, the only thing I can really suggest on that is to remember that not everybody needs to be overly muscled. Uh, you just have way too many people who... All of a sudden, we'll take all the clothes off the characters. And you've got this guy who's been a slob for like 90% of the thing. All of a sudden, has this incredible body where he's got like 27 abs. You know? Uh, draw realistic if it works. This is sort of why I recommend that if you're going to do a comic, one of the first things you need to when you're starting to set up the character bible is to have the characters in their underwear. This way you have a general feel if you're going to do realistic bodies or if you're going to do ultra-athletic bodies. And yeah, I know that there's it gets really weird really quick as far as calling one of them realistic and one of them not so, but, you know, you're going to, sometimes you're going to want to show that flab. And it's not going to be a bad thing. So, when you, that's why when you first set up the Bible and you start looking at character drawings and all that, yeah, you're going to want to do them in nothing more than a pair of skivvies. You know, no t-shirt, maybe just a pair of shirts, maybe a pair of tidy whities or even just simply a panties and bra ensemble. You know, something simple so you can see a lot of their muscular structure or lack thereof. Um, it's just straight up. When you start doing the sex scenes, you know where it's like naked anyway. So, having those drawings ahead of time definitely saves a lot of time and a lot of effort in terms of trying to figure out what they look like. Other than that, you're going to have to figure out how far into the mechanical process you're going to go. I know it sounds sort of weird, but... <sighs> Sorry, you have to understand, one of the things that really aggravates me when I'm watching a movie 
is the limited nudity shower scene. Uh, you know, everybody knows what I'm talking about. This is where the actor is obviously fully naked, but they don't show the person, you know, above mid thigh or below the waist. You know? It's one of those weird times if you're doing a shower scene, do you actually want to see the character's butt? Am I wrong? So having a scene where you only see part of the character and it just feels sort of wrong. This isn't to say this can't work for your particular comic. You know, if you're showing an intimate scene, you can show the people under the covers, you can show them from the shoulders up, so on and so forth. You don't even have to show their faces, which I know is going to come to a relief to a lot of artists out there. But you that's one of those limitations you're going to have to figure out before you get going. So even though you've got the characters and you know what their muscular structure looks like, you don't have to show it all. Just keep in mind that you're going to have to figure out how much of it's going to be good enough for your particular comic. <laughs> Sorry, you expect to hear the phrase your particular comic a lot. It just has trying to recognize that there's a difference between if I'm doing a really nifty coming of age story and I don't really have to show the sex so much as... I mean, it's going to be a major importance, but you don't actually have to show it, obviously. Um, flip side, if you're doing a full Roman orgy and you've decided to go full Caligula, yeah, you're going to be wanting to show a lot of this. And, of course, obviously, if you're doing an erotic comic, the same applies. The more detail, the better. If you're just simply doing a mature subject scene, all of a sudden you don't have to show all everything that's going on. And in fact, it can actually help your comic to some degree. Because let's get real, there's going to be a lot of really interesting scenes to draw from the artist's perspective. And a lot of it's just simply drawing the same thing over and over. And while this can sound really cool when you're watching it on TV or even a movie, it's not so much fun to watch in a comic. So, when it comes to drawing the thing, all I can suggest is know what the limits you're going to place on it are, know what the bodies of the people involved are, and try to figure out how much of it you actually need to show for your comic. It doesn't really get more complicated than that. Anybody who says otherwise is just trying to overcomplicate things. So, that said, let's get into the writing aspect, which is pretty much what you're here for, right? Understand that when we're dealing with sex, we're talking about a scene that's going to show a lot of intimate situations involving the character. I don't care if it's a teenage boy off on his lonesome or a group orgy or even a couple that engage in either casual or hardcore sex. The bottom line is you're showing some sort of emotional scale as far as that character goes. And there's just no way to do it because let's get real from them. A symbolic point of view, you've got the characters are going to be stripped down and exposing part of their physique and so, you know, the obvious symbolism of that is that we're showing the characters naked souls. And you as a writer need to get behind that idea 100%. If you... Sorry, there's one scene I'm coming in mind and it's Band of Brothers where they've got a couple that's just had sex and they've got the characters have... One of them, lovely woman, you know, good looking guy. And what's really funny about this scene is that you can tell that the woman, even though she's totally stark naked, still has her defenses up. You know, it's just something that she's comes in, you know, just even though she's totally stark naked, it still feels like she's wearing a suit of plate mail. You know what I mean? All her defenses are up. She's responding mechanically to the guy. 
and so on and so forth. It's just, she's well armored even though she's not got a stitch on. Same with the guy, it, I mean, as far as the clothing goes. But you've, he's also, you know, being really tender, really open. He is emotionally as naked as he is physically. So there is a definite level of symbolism there because even at her most naked, the woman is still, you know, wearing a thick skin of armor. So it's sort of an interesting contrast between the two. You as a writer have to understand that what I just said. If you don't, then it's time to hang up, hang up the typewriter or keyboard or pen and paper and go on and do other things. But you need to start realizing that a lot of the things that you do have a very definite symbolic meaning to write. And it may not seem that way at the time, but it's something that you definitely need to consider. And when it comes to sex, well, you've got two people that are naked. They're obviously reacting to each other and they're very, being very naked about it. And this, of course, can create its own weird situation. You know, and they're not just being naked to each other, but they're also being naked to the audience, which gives another level of symbolism to it. It's a really neat metaphor when you actually start looking at it. What this means is that if you have somebody who's so caught up in the artifice, that is, everything they do is a pretense and they've got a disguise for everything, even when they're bare buck naked, there's still going to be some level of disguise there. And it's always going to be pretty obvious. Either through the way they talk, or the way they move, or just simply the way they are. Conversely, you're also going to have a lot of people that, when they are being intimate, are at their most emotionally naked. You know, that is, they're willing to discuss topics they may not normally talk about, and they'll get to the heart of the matter a lot quicker. They just simply won't use all the flowery languages or all the euphemisms, so on and so forth, that we normally use in everyday speech. They'll get right down to brass tacks and keep it, you know, go right straight to business. Removing their clothes also tends to remove a lot of their masks and a lot of their disguises. And that's something that you as a writer need to capitalize on. So... You just need to keep in mind that there's a lot of stuff going on. Keep in mind also that when we do sex scenes, they don't have to be necessarily romantic. There can be a lot of other reasons there. Yes, if we're like said, if we're doing the emotional nudity thing, then having a couple of that or being intimate with each other are also going to be, you know, expressing their absolute truest possible love to each other. It's just part of the situation. They can't help but be who they are, and well, you've killed all their all their defenses and left them naked. They can't help but be whatever they are. Obviously, they're showing exactly who their true selves are. And when it comes to romance, well, two people that are in love are going to be showing it. They're going to be holding hands. They're going to be cuddling. Sure. They'll be entering each other's personal space, which is possibly the nicest way I can put it. But at the same time, they'll be doing a lot of stuff that involves just, you know, messing around with each other, not necessarily actually going with the full act. So that is one aspect of sex is the romantic. Of course, it can be perfectly casual as well. You know, you just happen to have people that happen to hook up at a party. The fun part is you're actually showing something about those two people as well because they have no problem doing what's in normally an intimate act and doing it just for their own personal enjoyment. Which in and of itself is a statement in and of it, you know, by itself. It's just simply saying, hey, I'll do whatever it takes to have fun. I don't care what. This isn't, of course, saying that there aren't, can't be other reasons for the, the sexual act. Um, some people use it as a more form of debasement towards another individual, as an extreme. 
again, you basically have the, this is who I am, take it or leave it, and you have no choice but to be here. So you're going to do whatever I tell you to do. You know, that's one obvious option, is that this one person is doing it just to prove how much they control they, they are in, of the other person. At that point, you've got somebody who's so caring for their own personal enjoyment that they don't really care about whatever the other person thinks. You're going to see this a lot, especially if there's situations involving prostitution. So, um, and of course, you could just simply have two people that are just having fun together. You know, that's always an option. We're not talking where it's a where it's casual, where it's you're trying to do something that you're trying to take scratch a particular need or the basement where you're trying to care about your needs versus another person's you basically have said screw it let's have some sex let's have a little bit of fun together you know and go at it from there there's also an initiation situation that needs to be dealt with as well uh, sex is seen as a coming of age, or sorry, as a rite of passage for a lot of people. That is, they don't really come of age until they've actually had some sort of sex. Um, losing your virginity, classic example. It's important because it defines the border, obviously, of childhood and adulthood. At that point, you are sexually initiated. You are doing the thing that biologically you're supposed to be doing which is doing things to cause the procreation of another human unit or whatever race we're dealing with or you could just simply i mean in, obviously in other situations it could just simply be at that point you've decided to finally open up to another person and express and try to move it past the simple little kisses and hugs of childhood into the actual sexual initiation of an adult. So, if you've got an otherwise serious comic about involving teenagers or even adolescents in general, you're going to have some coming of age sex. There's just no way around it. Uh, just keep in mind that if you do have a person losing their virginity, there will be a definite status change of some sort. Even if they, everybody else in the universe doesn't treat them as adults, you as a writer must. Because at that point, they've taken their first couple of steps into the actual adulthood thing. At that point, they are considered sexually mature, and that is, in a lot of cultures, the definition of adult. So, that is, and they've just proven that, hey, I can have sex, you know, from arousal to completion. And so, at that point, they've fulfilled one of the major requirements to be considered as an adult within their particular group. So, at that point, you as a writer, even if you want to treat that person as a child, you still need to treat that person now as an adult. And it can get really weird, especially if it's done really young. So... Obviously, losing your virginity is something you don't really want to do more than you absolutely have to. You're also going to have to make a major debate on the whole friends having sex thing. There are a lot of variations on this one. You could have two friends that have decided to move their relationship forward from being friends to actual lovers and have actually decided to initiate the sex act as part of that. That's great. You know, you've got two characters that are evolving. You've also got the curiosity feature, you know. Teenagers will have all sorts of sex together in hopes of actually having real sex with what they consider real sex with other people. Or some people will have it with friends just to get it over with. Again, that's fine. All I'm trying to point out here is that you can't have sex as friends without ruining the relationship, as long as it's done in a method of curiosity. However, if it's gone 
past that point and you've got one person who wants to remain friends and the other person decides to try to take it to the next level and the two of them just aren't meshing on that, you can't have something that will tear apart the friendship. Especially if it's not dealt with quick enough. Or if it's du- or if something happens that one of the two of them is not comfortable with. The classic example is the uh, straight boy and the gay, uh, gay kid, you know. They'll have sex. The gay kid will get a crush on the straight boy. Thinks that they're basically moving into a lover stage. And the straight boy is going to be not comfortable with that. You know, we sort of need to look at that as a perfectly fine. Not everybody's going to be attracted to everybody else. Sure, if you want to take it on a homophobic area, you can do it that way if you want. However, you also don't. You could just simply point out that we decided, you know, I decided to do it for curiosity's sake just to find out what it was like and decided I didn't like it. You can also, like could point out, go into a more of a casual situation. You know, the two of them will hook up every so often, one way or another, and that's fine too. You know, they automatically recognize they're just simply scratching an itch. They're not necessarily trying to initiate another step into the relationship. It, every relationship is going to be different, and that applies to the sex act as well. And what's going to make it different is going to be the motivation of what the two characters want to, are doing for it. That is, what they expect to get out of it. Not everybody goes into sex expecting the same thing as their partner. The classic example is um, the right of the... I uh, can't even pronounce it. So, uh, right of the first night is what it comes down to. Um in essence, a medieval nobleman would basically take up the virginity of the of a bride under his domain. And that was seen as completely normal if morally bankrupt. In essence, the nobleman was expecting to get a fun night of sex out of it, and the virgin was expecting to, well, expecting it rite of passage so obviously you've got two people getting two very different things out of the sex act and that's something again as a writer you need to sort of consider are the two people coming into it with the same motivation or are they trying to get something different out of it at that point that may complicate whether or not they get what they need or for that matter what they want And just because you're curious, yeah, that means the sex act can define a relationship and actually show the relationship, how the relationship actually works. So, that's always that. Obviously, if there's a couple and they're having sex, great. Uh, it just means that they're, inti- they're comfortable enough to be really intimate with each other. And that means that they may want to actually start debating the whole moving in type of deal. Um, on the other hand, you may have a relationship where it's pretty much all give, no take. Or, you know, again, this is going to be, you know, a guy who wants to have sex with somebody else, has all the sex, and doesn't really care about the enjoyment of the other person. On the other hand, the other person could be getting out of it that they're fulfilling the needs of that particular hero. You see this a lot in what you call uh, band-aids. That is, uh, women who, you know, go into concerts expecting to have sex with the, the singers or the drummers. Rarely the bass players for some reason. But, you know, you, the bottom line is you have women who want to have sex with people they admire, think are really fun, and then you have people who think sex is just their right. You know, it's just going to get really complicated really quick. The bottom line is, is that whatever happens with the sex act can actually define the relationship. That goes back to that symbolism thing I was mentioning earlier. Yeah, don't you just love it when a simple act gets really complicated? You got to hate being a writer. 
So, but the bottom line is, is that the sex act between two individuals will define exactly what their relationship is. And what they end up getting out of it, again, it will depend on the people involved. So keep that in mind also when you're writing up that big relationship chart as well. Alright, so... Basically, we have the, it sounds like what I'm trying to describe is that the only way to really have a sex act is to really have a sex act, right? No. What you're going to find real quick is that there are going to be ways to express that the two people have, in fact, had sex without actually having sex. A lot of this is just simply having the two people do something relatively common, and they have a lot of fun with it. Um... You know, the kissing and hugging is an obvious example, as long as you don't go too far past that, and clothes are kept on, so on and so forth, it doesn't actually technically constitute a sex act. It's just going to look like one, or done right, it looks like it might lead up to a possible sex act that nobody actually was able to see. Don't worry, we'll cover this under fade out sex momentarily. Um, an old standby is, well, if you watch, watch, especially the older movies, you'll see that the two people in love end up doing a lot of dancing. Guess what? Dancing is a stand-in for sex. Think about it. You've got two people that are moving really close to each other. Everything just matters around that particular individual or pair at that particular time. And you've got them definitely getting, and I cannot stress the, uh, the intimacy enough on this one. Because let's get real, dancing does not work unless the two people are really close together. So yeah, a lot of movies will want use sex as a, or sorry, will use dancing as a sex substitute. That's going to put a lot of interesting people, or a lot of interest in a lot of old movies, I bet. And of course, you can also have two couples, or sorry, the couple eating as well. Eating in this case, because it is an intimate act, they're showing how much they like, they're showing how they do things, and so on and so forth, because there is a definite level of intimacy there, can actually be used as its own sex substitute as well. And yeah, as you can tell, there's going to be a lot of ways you can key into something being a sex substitute. That is, it's not necessarily we're trying to get rid of the actual physical act itself, but rather, what we're trying to do is show some situation where the two people are intimate, where they lose a lot of their their masks, and they're emotionally naked to each other. That is, ultimately, you don't have to have an actual sex act in order to have a sex act. You know, have some fun with it. If you want to have two people that are playing cards, great. You know, you don't have to have a strip poker situation. Just simply... The two people by themselves playing a game of fish. Or, heck, if you really want to throw some interesting symbolism into it, have it be war. Because, let's get real, a lot of card games like Cribbage, Go Fish, that sort of thing, yeah, there's definite competition, but it's always a friendly competition. And what's not mattering at that point is because is the actual card play. What's really mattering is that you've got two people that have something occupy their hands and they're using that as a tool for conversation on the other hand if you go into war the only way it works is if it's fast is it's nonverbal and somebody wins and if you're trying to show two people in a combat situation you know it really doesn't get any better than that particular card game all right so if I've bored the, the artist, let's draw them back in, shall we? There's four basic concepts when it comes to rape, when it comes to actually portraying it. The first, obviously, is good old-fashioned fade-out sex. Calling it after the fade-out kiss. Y you, everybody knows what I'm talking about here. This is where you start up the sex act, you, you, know, you get the clothes off, or you get people into a comfortable position, and then right before they actually initiate anything, you go to a different scene. It's sort of annoying to see it in the movies if it's used too often, but let's get real, you don't always have to show the actual sex act in and of itself. If 
you don't want to, you can always use a sex substitute, or you can just simply cut to another scene. This is really great if you're trying to show something, you know, keep it simple. It's also really great for the rela for showing relationships where there's an actual strong relationship. We're not just simply talking, you know, somebody who's trying to keep control over the situation. We're just trying to show two people in love. You don't have to actually show them doing anything. Um, I would, however, suggest avoiding this is because if you do it too often, it feels like a cop-out. And if you've just shown, like, another character, set of characters having some really hardcore sex and you go to a, one that's where it's a fade-out scene, yeah, it's going to feel sort of cheap. So, use, try to use fade-out scenes almost exclusively, if you possibly can. Otherwise, it's just going to come off really weird. This is where it's going to come down to... I know it's a weird analogy, but I'm willing to bet everybody has this frustration with shower scenes where they just simply show from, you know, mid-thigh or lower, or they show from, you know, the waist up. You know the people are naked. Why not just simply show the people, you know, I won't, why not just show their butts, you know? It just feels weird to have this situation where you've got everybody rocking around naked. You know they're naked. They obviously know they're naked. Why not just go ahead and show it? You know what I mean? With fade out sex, you basically have the same situation. Yeah, it can be, if it's used effectively, it works. If it's just being used to avoid having to draw the scene, it's going to come off as sort of forced. The other extreme, and this is where there's going to be a lot of interesting conversations, is good old fashioned graphic sex. This is where you actually go in and show the actual sex act. Um, the obvious caveat is that you don't have to show everything. You can't just simply show shoulders, the back of heads, whatever. You don't have to show every possible mechanical situation to the sex act. Um, this is obviously where you and the artist are going to have to sit back and have a long discussion about exactly what you're going to show, what you're not going to show, and, you know, let, just simply let it go. The artist, obviously, is going to have whatever limitations they are, but at the same time, you as the writer recognize that you don't have to show everything in the sex act because a lot of it's not necessarily going to fit well with whatever you're trying to portray. Uh, if you've got somebody who's got, you know, keeps their mask on at all times, Obviously, you're not going to want to show everything because at that point, it just feels weird. You know, you've got this person who keeps his mask on, but at the same time, he just showed that. Yeah, there is just something wrong with the situation. However, you also want to avoid outright porn. Even if you are doing erotica, you're going to find out real quick that keeping something out of sight is actually going to create a little bit of heightened anxiety. And because of that heightened anxiety it's going to create a little bit of heightened interest in the, whatever you're doing. This means that even though you've got everybody saying show everything, you may not want to show everything. So, you know, try to avoid going outright porn because sometimes outright porn is incredibly boring, especially if you're doing it over and over again. Um... This is also where I'm going to point out where not everybody needs muscles. You can show the so-called more realistic shapes here. You know, if you a little bit of flab, you know, you can have somebody who's thin but doesn't have a whole lot of muscle. You know? So don't go too overboard with it. Um, there's also where it gets fun. And there's two variations on this one. The first, obviously, is that you can have a little bit of comedy with it. Be advised that comedy doesn't always work with sex, especially in a comic book format. That is, it works great if you can have some sort of situation where there's, you know, slapstick and showing the action involving slapstick doesn't really translate all that well. Doesn't mean you can't try for it, just 
be advised that sex is one of those times where if you're trying to do a comedy comic, you might want to seriously be not having it. If you do, like I said, you're going to want to do the standard misunderstanding situation. You're going to want slapstick if at all possible. And so on and so forth. You're going to want to have a lot more fun with misdirection than actually showing it. Yeah, I'd love to say that sex, put him in a clown suit, put him in a clown suit, have a couple of, you know, cream pies nearby. Yeah, it's going to work for you, but it doesn't usually. The other part, of course, is where you actually go into, let's be frank, good old uh, BDSM. Bondage is a really great way to have some fun with sex as is role play. You know, the principle of the naughty schoolgirl always works. Um, if you decide to go that route, you're going to want to have some sort of ritual attached to it. That is, the two people realize that there's rules, that there are, is an actual script, and that they actually have to follow that script in order to get the most out of the experience. Uh, it may sound a little silly, but, hey, it just didn't work out better that way. Unfortunately, we have to discuss the one thing that, especially in this generation, and that's good old-fashioned rape. You're going to want to limit the rape as much as you possibly can. The only problem is it's not always something you can avoid. And this isn't just if you're doing a prison comic. Um... You've got way too many characters that are defined by that one particular act on both sides of the fence. And it's something that you as a writer need to seriously remember. If anything I've said about symbolism and ramifications based off the sex act apply, this will be the singular act where it comes to it really comes strongest. It comes into focus like nobody's business. At this point, it's the ultimate invasion of one person into another's private areas, and that's something that needs to be remembered there. There will be ramifications, even if it doesn't seem like there will be. Um, you're going to need at least be partially graphic here. I don't, you, you just doesn't work that well with a fade out sex here. It's going to have to be something. I don't care if it's somebody dropping paint trowel or showing them way too close to each other or whatever. There needs to be some level of graphicness. And yeah, I know this is not a happy subject. But you also need to keep in mind there's going to be a lot more ramifications than if it's just simply the good old-fashioned, you know, a rape. You've also got to keep in mind that this applies to pretty much any form of sexual assault, that is, unwanted sexual contact. On a lot of levels, this is usually used for a lot of comedic effect, especially in the old days where, you know, two people would get drunk, there would be some serious misunderstandings, and so on and so forth, but you sort of need to keep in mind that keeping getting one person drunk is definitely going to be raping that person no matter how willing they were prior to. At that point, you're going to have to argue whether or not consent prior to the act counts as consent during the act. And there's a lot of debate on that one. Um, because if nothing else, some people will, you know, especially if we're talking about somebody losing their virginity, will end up, you know, grabbing a beer or something just for a good old Dutch courage. That is, hoping the lack of inhibition, inhibitions you get from getting drunk will help you do what you're actually trying to do. Um, if you're going to do that, obviously don't get the character too drunk. And you're going to get real fu into a really funny, fun philosophical match if both people are drunk prior to the act. You know? To that point, technically, both of the people involved were actually raped. They did the act without their consent, right? Both of them did that, not just one of them. So, if you're going to have rape, 
on any level, even if it's just simply somebody grabbing a quick kiss and it's definitely unwanted, you're going to have some serious ramifications. Yeah, I just pointed out that you can have rape in a G-rated comic if you do it right. But, but if I haven't pointed out through the sex substitutes, you, like you said, it's going to get really weird really quick when you actually start looking at sex. It gets complicated, but all relationships are, right? Also, keep in mind that you don't have to have a sex act that ends in consummation. Um, two characters can end up starting to have sex. It doesn't feel right. They stop. They go on. You do other things. Either just simply talk while they're in bed. Or they just simply decide to give up on it completely. That's fine too. And keep in mind that we're talking a lot of different kinds of sex acts. But that should be pretty obvious. You know, the bottom line here is. When we start dealing with sex, it's going to basically come down to a lot of interesting points. Um, no matter how you do the sex act, be it through actual sex or through you know dancing or having a really intense card game, the bottom line is that we've got two people that are trying to build a relationship, even if it's a casual one, and they're actually coming down as emotionally naked through the situation. You as a writer should have a lot of fun with that symbolism. Um, obviously, it's going to define a relationship and there's a lot of ramifications even from a simple kiss. You need to keep in mind a lot of those and work with those ramifications as far as the comic goes and where it goes from there. Sex can be used as an initiatory experience that is a coming of age thing and if you, that's the case you need one of the ramifications you need, to, you need to treat the character differently. You no longer can treat the character as a child. You need to treat the character as an adult. And there's no way I can emphasize that enough. Uh, before you even write the sex act you need to have a conversation with the artist to figure out just how far you guys are willing to go with it. Uh, because obviously if there's going to be limitations on how far the artist is willing to go, then you as a writer need to respect that. The artist obviously is going to be the limiting factor here. Yes, you as a writer can have your own limits as far as sex acts go, but obviously you can't do the, you won't be doing the illustrating. So, heh, there is that. Yeah, it's just like I said, you this is gonna be one of the more interesting conversations you're gonna to need to think and you need to keep in mind that whatever you do in the sex is gonna limit what you can do with your comic later on. You can have a lot of fun and definitely have it. You know there is no more intimate act than getting two people into bed and letting them have some fun with each other, so to speak. There's a lot of fun you as a writer and it can have and it gives you a lot of really great tools to work with but before you do do it you know make sure you know exactly why you're doing it for and it's because of that level of intimacy by the way that a lot of people tend to look at the rating system hardcore it's not just because of the um, nudity or the puritanical beliefs or whatever it's because to really get behind a really good sex act with a lot of symbolism, with a lot of ramifications, with a lot of, you know, a lot of meat to it, you need to have a certain level of maturity. And keep that in mind when you do the sex act. And yeah, I'm trying to be purposely vague, but just go with me on it. So all I can suggest is have some fun, plot it out, talk to your writer, or sorry, talk to the artist, and just have fun with it. That's it. I'll talk to you later. Have fun.